Hey everyone, it's Vaughn, the founder of Ballroom Mastery. I'm gonna answer a question that was just given to me by Lottie. Hey, I'm a ballroom dancer myself. I've almost finished my bronze bar achievements. I'd really love to dance professionally one day when I was talking with my sister, but we talked about how we'll manage it financially. Ballroom's not the cheapest thing in the world. I probably won't be able to dance competitively till I get a full-time job when I'm 18 because my parents can't afford it. How did you manage working in all the dance lessons? This is an amazing question and a lot of people have questions like this. And in fact, there's lots of people that would love to dance professionally and the door is open to them, but they don't walk through it. And the reason for that is they give in to their excuses and they never realize their full potential. I was not the most talented person in the studio. Far from it. My, do my coach looked at me and went, you're a donkey. The second problem I had was that besides not being talented, I was really old when I started dancing. Like I was 18 or 19, which if you want to do it professionally, is actually very old. So I was already on the back step. So what I'm going to share with you will work for you if you're willing to do the work. And this, these are not cliche advices like you can do it. You really got to be willing to sacrifice the safety of what everyone's gonna tell you you should go after for the future potential that you're seeking here. So the first thing is, when it comes to money, you need to learn how to earn money. Uh, you can do it as a job, but basically go get a job now. If you don't have the money to get lessons, then that's because you are giving into the excuse you don't have money. Go get a job, go figure it out, go get the money. Cause you need to be resourceful. Uh, the, the excuses everybody gives as to why they can't fulfill their potential as a dancer is essentially because they're not willing to fail enough to get there. What does this mean? You've got to be willing to work any job that will allow you the flexibility so you can focus on dancing. Your focus should be right now on upskilling. If you're not spending your spare time dancing, why do you think you'd become a professional in the future then? Because if you're gonna become a professional, today's the day you start. There's a Chinese proverb that says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. You don't become a professional when you start earning money. You don't become a professional dancer when you finish your exams. You become a professional dancer now when you make the decision, that's where you're going. And then you set about sacrificing as much as humanly possible and within the realm of not killing yourself now for that future of potential and promise. And what that means is that you have to, you will outwork most people that say they would like to be a professional. Like so being the least talented guy and being willing to work seven days a week in real estate because that was gonna fund my dance dream and then training six days a week and paying for five private lessons a week was the sacrifice I needed to make. I didn't have a social life. I now had to endure the ridicule of most people because they were like, you're always tan, man. Like you always got this like big ass smiley grin. Look at your hair, which I still wear to this day. Like what is going on? And cause I was in real estate, I looked like the cheesiest sales guy, right? Like, but I had to be willing to endure the ridicule and the rejection for my dreams. Most people thought I was mental, like I was crazy because I didn't have the skills or talents up front. And I was like, you know what? But I made this decision, right, with my partner who, Alison, who ended up turning out to be my wife, which I did not know would happen in the beginning. Uh, but we, we, at 19 years old, we were sitting down together and you know, she didn't do too well at school. I, I didn't do too well at school. And I was like, everybody in society is telling us we should go and get a job. We should go to university. And every, everyone says you should have a plan B. And I said, that's just not true. I, I, had a, I had a life coach, one of the most respected and, and popular in the world, and he was teaching me how to, to reach goals. He said, make your own path. The, the way to do something hasn't been shown yet. You, you can create anything you truly want to do, but you need to make a decision. You need to be willing to sacrifice, which means giving up something of a lower concern, like the instant gratification of everything, right? Like most people are, are hooked on instant gratification and if it, if it doesn't instantly feel good, then it must be wrong. And you need to stick to the decision through the terrain of obstacles, setbacks, challenges and failures that you're going to get, which are not an indication that you're wrong and you shouldn't be doing it. They are opportunities for your growth and your development. And what does that mean? It means that 
when you lose a competition and you're going to lose a lot, it means that you should use that as a platform to step up and grow from. I lost more than I won, but the, the losing made me go back in the studio the next day and take less time off to work harder, to train more, to be more intentional about what I wanted to do. The winning is what I remember, but I won less than I lost. And that's what people forget. Any professional you've met have all overcome their failures and they haven't given in to them. And most people are gonna tell you to play it safe and to go get a job and to don't worry about this daydreaming business of becoming a ballroom dancer. I could not be more passionate about the opposite. Too few people don't go after their dreams because they're so scared about what other people think. Don't be one of those people. You can go after what you want, regardless of your skills, talents, and abilities now, if you're willing to pay the price. The winner's circle is small in dancing. Why? Why is there such a small pool of professionals relative to the world of social dancing and, and ballroom dancing over the world? Because you have to earn your way up the ranks through getting through the failures of figuring out how to earn money, figuring out how to get to that next lesson, figuring out how to train, being willing to go through partners if that's what you have to do, being willing to move. We had to sell everything and go to England five or six years in. So we set the goal at 19, in 10 years to be representatives for Australia in, in our ballroom dancing, in 10 dance specifically. We did not think it could happen. We did not have the skills to do it. We started in the very first level. In five years, we made it to open amateur grade in three styles, Nuvo, Borum and Latin, which is fast, right? I think it's one of the fastest ascensions that you could possibly do. That wasn't enough though, right, to get to professional. So we, I sold my car, I sold everything I could not that wasn't tied down. So did Alison. We took any money we had and we moved to England to pursue our dream of dancing. We earned our way to be able to get lessons with the very best in the world because you need to model the behavior of people who are where you already are. Don't follow people who are not going anywhere. Don't ask people who haven't achieved what you want how to get there. Your parents aren't gonna know. I mean, I don't know who your coaches are. Maybe they don't know. but. If you're resourceful enough, you'll figure it out. But more importantly, get around the people that you wanna be. So if you wanna be a professional, then set the goal of going to work with the best coaches in the world in England or, or in the US, but I'd say go to England. Uh, set that goal and do it soon, right? If you don't have a partner, go find one there. Like whatever it is, you gotta be willing to figure it out and you can figure it out. But if you're worried about a plan B, then the chances are when you hit your real failures, Let's say you move to England, you actually go over there and you start pursuing it. When you start to really bump up against the hard reality of being a professional dancer, you'll probably just execute on your plan B and burn out. Because if you've got a plan B, you're gonna use it. That doesn't mean you should not be smart. I had a skill of selling in real estate to fund my dream, but it was a parallel because I knew down the track that I could turn ballroom dancing into ballroom mastery. Like I knew I could turn ballroom dancing into a dance business right? Because you should not just be a boring dancer. You should learn another skill, but that shouldn't be your plan B. Your other skill should be the thing that develops that, you know, down the track you can use because professional dancing, of course, you can't do forever. But a plan B in the sense of, let's say, uh, you get a university degree to be an event planner, for example, and if dancing doesn't work out, I'll become, be, go become an event planner. Well, then I'd say just go become an event planner because your heart is not in it. You, you need something so empowering to go through the failure of what you need to go through and the pain of change to become a professional that the, the, the slightest hint it's not working, you're just gonna pull the pin. So I ask you, how serious are you about your goal? What do you really want? Because if you really want it, you can absolutely do it. There's no doubt. But you need to be willing to sacrifice an enormous amount up front in exchange of any result. Now, how do you manage to fit it all in? Well, like I said, you sacrifice time and then you apply focus and you develop a team around your goals. My team was Allison and I had a life coach and a dance coach, that's all we needed. We paid no attention to the politics of dance. To this day, I don't get involved in the politics of dance. I, couldn't, I can't stand the politics of dance. I don't wanna be involved. I wanna create content, I wanna teach. That's what I like doing, right? So 
If you are willing to be bold and courageous and go for what you want, the world will open up to you. But you've got to ignore the naysayers, you've got to ignore the haters, and you've got to shun the non-believers. Now, what does that mean? A non-believer is somebody who doesn't think you can become a professional. A believer, though, is somebody who believes in your ability and is willing to back your dreams and goals. Don't confuse a critic though, like somebody who says you need to fix this, you need to do that as a non-believer. So, so somebody who's critiquing you and helping you and making you, like me, like I would say I'm a believer in you, I know you can do it, but if I give you critiques and tell you how to change things, that doesn't mean I'm a non-believer. So don't confuse that. You gotta surround yourself with the, with the believers, the people who believe you can do it because your path hasn't been set. You can create any path you want. It's just unfortunate that you've been trained like most people to just be like everyone else and to do the safe thing. Well, the safe thing isn't the right way to live. It never has been and never will be, and there is no safety, right? So don't buy into that lie. The safety, the, the reality is that you need to develop certain skill sets that will guide you through the rapidly changing world. And even if you decide not to become a teacher at the end of your ballroom dancing, you can certainly become a professional ballroom dancer. There's no doubt in my mind. You just have to be in the game and you have to be very, very serious about it from now, not tomorrow, not in four years, not when you get to gold level, now. And then you set about making all the decisions and you start training like a professional. Start watching some of the videos I put here about acting as if, like, today's the day you become a professional. Then you spend the next few years developing the skills to be the professional. I hope this has helped you. Thank you for the question. Thanks for sticking with me through the very long response, but it's an important one for most people to hear. And I'd open up to anyone who's got a comment or another question and I'll answer it. Thank you for your time and good luck, Lottie. Go crush it.